All right, so we're going to start with the granddaddy of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu concepts, the Ne Plus Ultra of Island Top Team Jiu-Jitsu, and that's base posture and structure. Uh, so these three terms we use to uh, denote what we overall call alignment. Uh, base posture and structure are terms that pretty much every Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner has heard at some point, mm -hmm. although many of them unfortunately don't have a, a good working definition of these terms. Some people, for instance, seem to think that base means being low and wide or, or hard to move. Uh, and my response to that is, you know, I'm low and wide right now. I don't think anybody would say that I've got good base at the moment. Yeah. So uh, we define base as uh, a platform from which to apply and absorb force. Uh, and we say a platform because sometimes and most of the time it is the ground, it is the mats, but occasionally it's going to be the wall, occasionally it's going to be your opponent that you're pushing off of to generate base. So we use the term platform. Uh, a simple example of this would be what most people call combat base, where they're sitting like this. And uh, in our definition of the word base, this isn't good base. Because if you push me right now, I'm going to fall over. So I can't absorb force effectively. Not only that, if I want to try to push you, I can't do it effectively because I'm really only using my arms. But if I make a, a minor adjustment and I place my toes on the mat, which we call this live toes and we call this dead toes. So if I go live toes and now you go to push me, I can absorb it with my rear post, and if I go to push you, I can be effective because the entire amount of force production that my body is capable of is available to me. So anything that involves having less than the entire amount of potential force production in your body is not good base, so it's not, we just call it not being in base. Can you give me some examples of base in other positions? Yeah, absolutely, we're, we're, we're gonna go through the technical stand-up in great detail uh, momentarily, but for instance, if I attempt to technical stand up with my leg forward like this, and let's say you don't want me to get up. So you're going to grab my ankle and down I go. Even if I'm part way into the technical stand up, you grab my ankle and I'm not able to get up. But if I keep my foot closer to me, and now you do the same thing, you grab my ankle, I'm able to technical stand up, no problem. So I've got good weight distribution, uh, base, right, ability to absorb force. Ability to absorb force. Another really common example is in, in, in side control. You'll find people will be dead toes like this and not have the ability to drive. If I'm holding side control, I always want my toes on the mat so I can drive my pressure into you more effectively than I could be if I had my toes dead. So that would be producing force or if I bridge into you really hard. Exactly, you absorbing could, force, right. yes. So that's the definition that we use for base. Posture is just proper spinal alignment. You know, if you had a, a good third grade teacher, they probably told you, you know, don't slouch. Now, slouching in jiu-jitsu, you know, we are gonna curl up sometimes, so we don't wanna be dogmatic and say that good posture involves always being like this. But posture refers to the alignment of your spine in the sense that if I twist my spine, so for example, if I'm align this way with my hips and this way with my shoulders, my spine is twisted up. I become weaker and weaker the more twisted my spine becomes. With my head, if my head starts to bend to one side, my spine gets twisted up, I become progressively weaker. Uh, there is a, a concept in kinesiology called the kinetic chain or kinetic linking, and I'm sure you're familiar with where, which describes the, the body's ability to generate force by linking muscles together to, create gener uh, to generate greater force production. So when my spine becomes twisted, the kinetic link is, or, or kinetic chain is broken. So my, let's say, for instance, uh, if I want to do like a shoulder press, this is how I would sit. I'd be able to lift a fair amount of weight here. If I twisted my spine up like this, I would not be able to push the same amount of weight. Or if you rotated. Or if I rotated, exactly. So in, in every position, we want to have good posture because going back to the same thing that makes base so powerful is it allows for maximum force production from our body. Posture also contributes to creating maximum force production from our body. And then the final one is uh, structure. Structure is, uh, for us, defined as the most efficient way to use our limbs. So our arms and legs can perform a few different functions, uh, and we're gonna define that uh, a little bit more in the, the next segment. But in every case in jiu-jitsu, I have a goal and I want that goal to be achieved with as efficient use of my limbs as possible. The, the example I usually give of this isn't even jujitsu. it's just if I wanted to hold a push-up position for as long as possible, if that's my given goal. My structure 
would look like this. I would have my arms locked out because my skeleton is now supporting my weight. Now, if I bend my elbows, this would be poor structure because I'm not able to hold a push-up position for as long. Okay. There's just no way. My muscles will start to fatigue, and eventually I'm going to fall down and get a face plant. My modeling career will be over. <laughs> so those three terms, base, posture, and structure, will create what we call alignment. And alignment is a necessary ingredient of every successful technique, movement, transition, everything that we do in jiu-jitsu. And not just jiu-jitsu, this, is, this applies to boxing, it applies to wrestling, it applies to skiing and you know, cricket, whatever sport, anything that requires your body to perform an athletic movement requires proper alignment. Uh, and, and I think that as uh, the instruction of jiu-jitsu grows, uh, and we use more and more scientific methods to, to quantify what we're doing in jiu-jitsu, uh, proper body alignment is going to be uh, paid a lot more attention. Okay. And we're going to have lots more examples. Tons of, of examples. Base posture and structure, not only in this volume, but in all the volumes of this series. Exactly. Okay, looking forward to it. Right, so the, the movement that we're going to use to demonstrate base posture and structure is uh, the technical stand-up. So the technical stand-up is something that you should learn on your first day of jiu-jitsu, uh, but again, you'd be surprised by how many people do this incorrectly because it, it tends to be overlooked in terms of importance. In much the same way you, that you will see people shadow boxing, where they're kind of throwing sloppy uh, punches just because they don't really want to think about how much of an impact that's having on their technique. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing happens with the technical stand-up. I see people all the time just doing these like awful sloppy technical stand-ups. Um, the technical stand-up, if I start with, let's say I'm going to go to my right side. My right hand is going to be behind me, which is going to help me absorb force coming in. If, for instance, you know, as an opponent in a fight, whatever goals I have, you're going to be trying to interfere with those goals. So if you want to push me back and I put my hand here, then I'm not effectively absorbing force. So if I place my hand here and you're pushing into me, I should be able to absorb all your force, no problem. Because there's a straight line there's between a straight how you're pushing line. Exactly. where you're basing. Exactly, which we're going to cover that uh, particular concept a little bit more later. So you can just keep kind of pushing on me. So right now I'm absorbing force. My left foot is in base here. It's going to allow me to lift my hips. I'm going to slide my knee back. That allows me to create a post that's going to replace my hand as I get to my feet. While I'm doing this, I'm also maintaining posture. So I have good structure with my arms and legs. I'm not sticking my leg out here, giving you access to a lever, and I'm not bending my elbow, giving you the ability to push me over. So I have good structure. I have good base because I'm able to generate force, lifting my hips. I'm able to absorb force, you pushing into me. Now if I do both of those things correctly, but I bend my neck, what would be your immediate instinct if I tried to get up there? Exactly. And there goes my modeling career again. Again. So I want to make sure that I have good structure, good base, good posture. I elevate my hip. I slide my knee back, maintaining the placement of my knee over my ankle. Because this is another common error. People go like this all the time. And now again, there's a lever. You're going to grab it, put me back on my butt. So this is our tech, correct technical stand-up. Good frame, good base, good posture, good structure, and I'm up to my feet. So how can people, for a given move, figure out what good base posture and structure is? You've just shown them for the technical stand-up. What about I don't know, for the scissor sweep or for the uh, a throw? Like how can they a priori begin to figure this out? Unfortunately, the answer to that is mat time Okay. Uh, and understanding these concepts. The concepts that we're going to uh, continue to elucidate uh, in this volume are going to help you uh, independently check your movements. Uh, force production is the thing that we're most concerned with. So in any movement, in any technique, if you feel like you're struggling to execute the movement, the beauty of jiu-jitsu is it's, it's efficiency. It is the, the martial art that a smaller, weaker individual can use to overcome uh, or at least escape from a larger, stronger individual. And the reason for that is we're creating an alignment where our body can be as strong as it possibly can be, and we're also learning to break our opponent's alignment and make them weaker. So if you feel like you're struggling at any point to do a technique, particularly in class when you're just drilling, you know, you see people like grimacing and trying to execute a technique, that's your immediate first clue 
then you don't have base, you don't have posture, you don't have structure. Uh, I actually highly recommend videotaping your drilling or rolling sessions to check. I have had techniques, for instance, that I've made small errors on for a couple of years just because I didn't have somebody, you know, I didn't have access to a coach for a period of time looking at me. Certainly since I opened my academy, I don't have a coach hovering over me all the time. So I occasionally will videotape things and I'll be able to self-correct because I'll notice things that that I wasn't oh, doing my properly. Arm was my arm here. was bent, or I didn't place my foot on the ground, therefore I wasn't generating force. Like a simple example for me was when I do a deep half guard entry, and we'll just rotate this way towards the camera, because you'll see the mistake, is I would have a hook here, and I was attached to the hip, and I would pull the person onto me, which is still effective, but you'll notice my left leg is dangling out here. There's no effective base. So if you come back, you'll notice that when I plant my foot in base, the amount of force that I'm able to generate is far greater for the deep half guard entry. And so that's a technique that you could have performed effectively for many years because it still works, but it's, you're working at let's say 70% efficiency rather than 100% efficiency. So there are techniques that even if they're functional, they'll be much more highly functional if you pay attention to these details.